Greetings and praise the Lord, folk. We're back here at the Bishop's desk. Uh, it's a little later today, but however, it's here. I pray that everyone is well. And I pray that you were able to do a little research of your own, dealing with Colossians 3 and 20, the child, and we spent uh, a considerable amount of time with train up while being in Proverbs 22, understanding the scripture that's tied to Colossians 3 and 20, children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. And then we have a parental duty here in verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. And as I shared with you, um, still learning, but feel like God has blessed me to somewhat uh, thrive a little bit in this area and raising sons and I take no credit because me being able to apply the principle of being a young boy a lad um, is because of my own upbringing and some of my life experiences and so I share these with you to help you if you have young children um, even if you don't have young children uh, even if you have young adults, um, I'm in that phase right now of my children. They're young adults. My youngest being 21, 24, 27, and 31. So I have a, a, a range of children there that I can speak about. And so I pray that the words that the Lord, the Holy Ghost, gave you on the last bishop desk and train up because we're in Proverbs 22, right? Um, 22 and 6. We're tying 22 and 6 with Colossians 3 and 20, okay? Understanding that the child must, be, uh, must obey you. But he can only obey you if you train him right. So that's what brought us to um, Proverbs 22. But before I go into the word, um, you know, oftentimes we, we, we're we struggling and we're going through and we're having challenges of life, right? And so I want to just play a little bit of this song from Greg O'Quinn and joyful noise I told the storm sometimes we have to speak to the storms in our life lives life whether you, you, you single or whether you uh, in a relationship with, with your husband or wife but sometimes we got to speak to the storms in our life right because again I preached on last Sunday that our thoughts have power your thoughts have power, and sometimes speaking is not always opening your mouth. It's your actions. It's it's uh, your faith. I was sitting here at, at, at my overseer's desk, right? And I can remember she taught a message on uh, the faith. If one has the faith, the grain of a mustard seed. The scripture says, let me see, let me see, faith, uh, a mustard seed, okay, uh, Matthew 17 and 20, Jesus said, because you have so little faith, truly, I tell you, if you have faith, like a grain of mustard seed. You can say to this mountain, 
move from here and there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Matthew 17 and 20. And I had um, overseer, she had the mustard seed being the smallest seed, right? And let me show it to you. Jesus said, if your faith Right, I understand you already have little faith. They so little, I'm losing them. He said, I understand, truly, I tell you, you know, I know you have faith already. But he said, if you have faith like the grain of a mustard seed, that's a mustard seed. Look at that little seed. Jesus said that he can operate in that little space for you if you would just have that much faith in you then you can tell mountains to move that's how powerful jesus is the holy spirit that's in you that he is so powerful that if you would just have faith of a mustard seed that you can tell the mountains in your life to move and look and nothing <laughs> will be impossible because the scripture lets us know what all things are possible with God right and so sometimes you just got to tell how do identify the plants in your backyard mountains in your life to plant. move Picture. and i want to share this with you just a little bit of it I'm just letting y'all into my space, how I worship God, and some of the songs that help me, right? Listen. Just listen to this. I'm not going to sing, y'all. Command that thing to move. Because of faith. Yes, I did. You can too. I can do all things just with a little bit of faith. I can tell the storms to move. But yeah. The storm don't have a choice. Yeah. It can't last. It's got to go. It's got to stop. Listen, no weapon for him against me shall prosper. Yeah, that's how I get it. I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah, yeah.
And you need to tell your son today. Every time I hear this, just bring tears to my eyes. Because it's so encouraging. Yeah. Yeah, they're not tears of sadness. It's tears of joy. To know that I can speak to the mountains in my life. And that God loved me that much. That all things are possible. That all things are possible through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. And so every time I hear that, I cry because it's just tears of joy. Because why me, God? You know, so many people are dying and, and losing a life. And I haven't been perfect. But why me, God? And so it just brings tears to my eyes. And, and I, I'm sorry for allowing you to see this part of me. But, you know, I'm saying I'm not ashamed of the Lord. You know, I'm a full blood man. And and I love God. And, and God has been so good. And, and just to know that just to have this much of faith that I can move mountains in my life. I mean, it makes me feel special to know that in the world that we live in, the environment that's so wicked, that I don't have to succumb to it, that God is fully, and I, I, I am fully engulfed. He has allowed me to be fully engulfed in him that I'm protected, that I'm okay, that my tomorrow has hope, and that even though today might be a little tough, if he allowed me to see tomorrow, that he has already worked it out. And so I just wanted to share that with you a little bit, right? Just to let you, just to let you in on a little bit how I worship God and, and, and how I get going, right? how I get my motor going and, and to get into that space where I begin to reverence God. And so I pray that that encouraged somebody. But listen, uh, chapter three in Colossians, um, chapter three, verse 20, it said, children, children, to obey your parents in all things. But before we can put this responsibility of a child to obey the child must first be trained to know how to obey so we can't dump this on a child so quick ultimately this is the responsibility of the child after the child has been trained up in the way he should go because he's going to get old one day and the promise is he will not depart from it from what the training up we found out that to train up means to narrow to initiate to discipline when you fit, hear that word train up and you apply it, you, we, we look at the narrow, the, to, to make smaller. Uh, the decisions that your child can make as a, as a parent while they're young, you should narrow those decisions. And you should lead them. You should initiate. You should take the initiative as a parent. To discipline them and to lead them to be disciplined. This word discipline, you know, is 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 to correct them, right? Discipline. We looked it up before, but we'll look it up again. Discipline. To practice. To practice. We got to practice with our children. Good ways. Right? You say to discipline. In, in um, Proverbs 22 and 6. 
to train up, to discipline who? The child, the young boy, the, the youth. And, 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 it's, and it called the child a retainer. The Hebrew word for child is a boy, a lad, youth, a retainer. Right, But he said to train him up, teach him the rules, teach him the code of behavior, using punishment to correct disobedience. Right, And we talked about punishment. But let's look at retainer. We know what retain, to retain means, to keep, right? But let's just look at the word. You know how, you know, I like to not assume anything to retain right retain retain continue to have something keep possession of absorb and continue to hold to keep it it's called the child a retainer because Whatever you put out, nine times out of ten, the child's going to keep that. It'll retain that. If you're consistent with the child, that's the most important part, consistency. If you correct the child today for a situation or an event that took place that needed correction. And then two weeks later, the child um, do the same thing over again. The child may violate the rule again. You have to correct the child again. And again, we talked about uh, spanking and we talked about uh, physical punishment it's not always needed for every situation uh, we found out that the the child needs maybe physical uh, uh, correction after it has no regard for correction right and some people disagree with uh, physical correction but we saw in the word where God spoke about physical uh, correction but then there comes a time where the child just disregards it and sometimes you have to you have to be physical with the child and we're not talking about abusing any child because let's get this clear. Anyone that abuses a child don't deserve to have a child. Anyone that abuses a child should be put in jail. Anyone that abuses a child should lose their child. Anyone that do anything to a child, a harmless child, he or she should be reprimanded themselves. So let's get that clear. When we talk about um, chastising a child. Okay, and I and I always and I'm gonna make this 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 statement. I'm not telling nobody to do anything to their child. I'm not telling anybody how to discipline their child. I'm telling you what the word of God says. And so Whatever the word of God say, that's what you do, okay? And so, what I do with my, ch what I did with my children, I did with my children. What what you're led to do with your children, you do with your children. But he said to train train up this child, this this young boy, this lad, this retainer, one who who's at a at a, a space in their life where they they're ready to absorb and keep your instructions and because they're at that space in their life where they're ready to absorb and to keep and, and the Bible said that they are a retainer take the advantage of that time 
because the time will come when you're not going to be able to tell a child what to do anymore because they will become an adult and 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 they're no longer in that state where where they're desiring the direction of their parents okay and so he said to train the child up train them up right and 22 and six train them up train the child up in the way right in the way he should go and so the way the scripture is broken down is broken down into one two three four five six seven eight nine uh ten okay so verse six is broken down into ten parts the first one is train up the second one is a child. The third part is just the word in. In the way. So I connected those two. In the way he should go, right? And so in the way he should go is meaning at the mouth of his path or way. The direction. To direct the, the, the Greek the Greek word for, I'm sorry, for in the way is direct. D E, let, let's, let's look it up. I want to pronounce it right. D E, this is the Greek. D E R E K. Pronunciation. Let me. Uh, the pronunciation of this. Let's hear what it says. Derek. 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 D E R. E K D E R E K. This is the Hebrew Derek. for and Derek. the way he should go. Derek. Meaning a course of life or mode of action. Okay? A long way because of Eastwood Passenger Highway pathway, wayside. Derek means way, path, road, highway. Okay? In the way. Derek, the Hebrew. That's what this means. The way the child should go. Okay? This is the way he should go. And he's saying, which way, which way should the child go? Well, Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Well, not Ephesians, because Ephesians is talking about obeying the power. But in the way he should go. The righteous way he should go, right? The father responsibility is to direct the child to direct direct the child to train him in the way he should go right and it tells the father fathers it first tells the father in in chapter 6 of Ephesians a strict clear instruction and ye fathers don't provoke your child, right? But train him up in the way he should go. So he says here, so I'm taking the two scriptures and I'm, I'm looking at them together. I'm looking at Proverbs 22 and 6. And I'm looking at Ephesians 4, 6 and 4. And so I'm tying the two together. And I'm having a conversation between these two scriptures, okay? So it says in Ephesians 4, and ye fathers, 
Provoke not your children. This is a parent's duty. Not to provoke your children. Provoke them to do what? To disrespect you. But fathers, you shouldn't provoke them. You should train them up in the way they should go. Right? Don't provoke them to wrath, but train them up in the way he should go. Right? But bring them is what he's telling. He's telling you, look, bring them. Carry them. Bring them. There's knowledge that exists, right? There's knowledge that exists. And he says, bring him to the mouth, right? Bring. Bring. Bring, okay? Bring. Bring. Listen, take or go with to a place. And so he's telling the, 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 the parent, the father, don't provoke him. And in, in 22, he's saying, listen, train him up in the way he should go. Bring him, right? Bring him to the mouth of instructions. Because here in 6, he says, Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring him to, to this place. Because at this place, nurture. Nurture, right? He says, don't provoke them, but train them up. Don't provoke him. Take him the way he should go. Bring him, right? Derek, bring him. Show him. Bring him to the mouth of the path of his way, right? Care for and encourage the growth or development of. Care for your child as a father. Encourage him as a father Derek him bring him to the mouth of his path or way which way is that you have to bring him there to the knowledge of Christ right the idea seems to be that when he comes to this opening of way Derek when you get him there when you nurture because here he says to nurture to nurture means to care for, right? As you care for him, he comes to the mouth of this idea which seems to be what he has come to. Give him a complete series as you nurture, right? As you introduce, as you care for him. Don't leave out anything. Be a complete dad. He says, give him a complete series of instructions on every step he is to take because now he's at the mouth of, he's at Derek, the mouth of the way he should go in this life. And it's your responsibility as a father not to provoke him unto wrath. Don't do things before him that will make him disrespect you. Right? Don't do that. But nurture him. Nurture him in, in, in the admonition of the Lord. Admonition. And act or action of admonishing, authoritative counsel or warning, giving him the knowledge to to admonish the 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 authority that God the Lord has over his life, bringing him into the knowledge and counseling him 
and warning him that if you don't acknowledge Christ, if you don't develop a prayer life, if you don't pray to the Father, then you 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 cut yourself off from God. You must admonish God. You must you must you must acknowledge God that he is the ultimate authority in your life, right? You bring him, Derek, you bring him to this pathway, right? You and, and you show him the way he should go. You teaching him. And and in order for you to show him the way he should go as a father, you got to be living something yourself. You can't teach a child. You can't tell a child to do well and to excel and you're doing nothing. You can't tell a child to uh, go and, and, and make the best of themselves and you as a father... You're not doing nothing your own self. You know, you're not living up to what you're instructing him to do. But as a father, and, and it goes back to Ephesians 6. It, again, it says, children, obey your parents. Again, it's a commandment. But in order, and then it gives, and, and it tells them to honor thy father. In order for the child to be able to, fulfill this commandment he must be first trained up as a child of God it says train up as a child train up a child but he must be trained up as a child of God he must be brought to the mouth of the word the instructions the discipline of the word so that he can honor his father and his mother the right way. That it may be well with thee. And thou mayest live long on the earth. So it's important that as a father. You have a lot to do with how long your child going to live. Yeah. You do. A lot of children that have lost their lives at a year early age. Due to. Uh violence and due to things that were avoidable some father's going to have to uh, stand before God about that because he, he, he said for the children this commandment was to the children but God understood that I can't hold these children accountable for this if the parents didn't do what they were supposed to do I don't expect the child to honor his father and his mother if he wasn't taught, if he was never brought to the mouth of the instructions in the word, if he was never drilled thoroughly on how to perform his duties as a child, if he was never given the series of instructions on every step he should take. I can't hold him accountable for that, but somebody has to be held accountable, and that's the father. Because you must teach him how to escape danger. How to perform his duties as a child. You must teach him how to obey his parents. You must teach him how to honor you. You must teach him how to honor his mother. You must drill him thoroughly on how to perform these duties. How to escape danger. And how to appropriate the blessings of the way. Because coming in this way... It is a blessing coming this way. But he needs to know how to appropriate that. Stamp these lessons deep on his soul. Now that's deep when you put it on his soul. That's a lot of training. And lead him to practice them until they, until they are part of his life and nature not nurture but nature you must nurture him that the principles of the word of God will teach him how to obey his parents honor his father and his mother 
that it may be well with him, right? And that he may live long on the earth and that it becomes a part of his nature. That he respect you regardless, okay? Bathe him in prayer. Bathe him in prayer and instill the fear of God into him and he shall not depart from it. If you bathe him in prayer, bathe him in prayer. Teach him how to pray. Teach him what to pray for, right? Bathe him in prayer. And instill the fear of God into him. And he shall not depart from it. Why? Because there's going to come a time when he is old. It talks about. The Bible talks about the child is going to become of age. Proverbs. Psalms 37. Go to Psalms 37, 25. Let's see what that say. Psalms 37. Psalms 37 and 25. What does that say? Psalms 37. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. In other words, he's saying here that he's seen the blessings of God because he was brought. He was brought. To the mouth of the pathway. Of righteousness. He was. He was trained up. It was drilled in him thoroughly. How to perform and how to conduct himself. As a child. Right. Because these things. Was taught to him. Because. He was. He was bathed in prayer. He was taught to fear God. And now that he is old, because his parents did, his father did what he was supposed to, right? He's old now. And because it is never, the principles of serving God has never left him, right? Because it's part of his nature, right? Because you trained him up when he was young, right? He's seen the blessings of God. Over his life. And now that he's old. He's making a proclamation. He's saying. I have never seen. The righteous forsaken. Never. Because. It did it because the ways. Of serving God. And honoring my father. And my mother. Because they became part of my nature. And because it was well pleasing with God. I've been able to live to see and to be an old man. But over that time, I thank God for a praying mother. Over that time, I thank God for a praying father. Because it has, it has brought me to this place in my life as I recollect, as I look back over my life, and as I see the the, the mistakes that I've made and I've seen the, the opposition that has always been around me. God has always been faithful. God has always made a way out of no way. And now that I am, I'm old, I see that even in my shortcomings, God has never forsaken me because I was introduced to the fear of God. 
And because I was introduced to the fear of God and it and it stayed with me, I can all say, so say that I've never seen God's seed beggeth bread. And he said, he is ever merciful and lendeth, God giveth. And his seed is blessed. We're blessed people because we're doing it God's way. So he tells the Father in Ephesians not to provoke your children to wrath, but to bring them up, bring them to the mouth of. But derrick them and nurture them and the admonition of the Lord. Teach them, right? And it says, and when he was well, oh, he will not depart from it. It will not leave him. It will remain, this depart. It will remain. All the way through his life, it will remain. And more than anything, as a parent, as a father, it is your desire that your children are safe, right? It's your desire as a parent that your children conduct themselves responsibly, right? And so he tells the father, Again, to love your wives, we as men, so many of us have dropped the ball on teaching our sons how to love women, how to respect and to honor women. When when the child begins to understand that the father and the mother, uh, that they're a husband and wife, and, and that it's something special about that union and that relationship, and the child begins to understand that the father is the head and that the wife uh, uh, is his help me and that she is his, his, his source of help and that he takes care of his wife it teaches a young boy how to honor and respect women the reason why young men don't respect young women today because they don't see it in the home most young men don't have fathers in the home to show them how to love a woman respect a woman open the door for a woman go acknowledge a woman bring her flowers home on her anniversary acknowledge her on 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 her birthday acknowledge her they don't see these things so then when they get into relationships themselves they don't know how to do these things and then you get young women who are in relationships with young men who have never been taught how to honor and to love a woman they begin they they get into these abusive relationships and then they get hurt and then they have children by these guys and then you had this is where broken families come from and it all stems back to the father the father has a great price to pay pay to god that's why i was telling you sisters when i was using when the word uses the word subjection and submissive don't be so don't be so quick to get upset with that because the responsibility that falls on the man, it is great. And you don't want a part of it. So he tells the husband to love his wife and be not bitter against them. He tells them that for a reason. Because the children, the young males, they're watching. And, and if he sees his dad always bitter towards his mom, he's going to think that that's a normal behavior. 
to be bitter with his mom and to fuss at his mom and to to yell at a woman all the time then he's going to he's going to he's going to remember that now you're bringing him to the mouth of something that that God is not part of when God said for the husband to love his wife even as Christ have loved the church and gave himself for it. You should bring him to the mouth of that action. Right? Love your wives and be not bitter against them. Bring him to the mouth of you being pleasant to your wife. Right? And so he tells the child, and then he goes and he says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. First Timothy 3 and 4. First Timothy 3 and 4. One that ruleth well his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Okay? And so he's telling, he's, he's telling him here that as a man of God, you are to be able to rule your children. It's your responsibility to rule your children until they become of the age that they become responsible for themselves, right? And you should be able to rule your children and your children should should, should be in a place where they're not discouraged because you have to discipline them. Because, you, because you're consistent in their life, right? And so... This is what this is what the word of God is saying to the father. And so we're 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 here in Proverbs 22 training up a child in the way he should go and when he get old he will not depart from it. The scripture is so true all by itself because as you bring the child before God I'm I'm as I sat there, I began to think on Hannah and Samuel. And in 1 Samuel and 2 and 26, uh, no, let's go 1 Samuel 1 and 28. Therefore also, this was this was Samuel mom therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth he shall be lent to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord there because she was so she was so grateful Hannah was so grateful uh, after having a wound that would not bear a child and then God blessed her wound to bear a child she said, God, I'm going to give this baby to you as long as he lived. And the child, Samuel, grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. It, it, the favor of God follows your children when you give him Jesus. And more than anything, we want the favor of God to follow our children. We want our children to be blessed. We want to live old and to see our children blessed and not have to beg bread. And now behold, the king walketh before you and I am old and gray headed and behold, my sons are with you and I have walked before you for my from my childhood unto this day. In other words, in other words, Samuel, he had he, even from a child up until now, he stayed, he remained consistent. And that's one of the greatest, that's one of the greatest attributes that will come out of giving your 
child Christ is consistency. The child will learn how to consistently seek God for themselves when they become of age. If you bathe them in prayer. If you drill them thoroughly on how to perform his duties as a child. Then the child can honor their parents. Then the child can fulfill the scripture to obey the parents in all things. But a child cannot obey you if you don't teach them. And again, somebody's going to have to give an account of it. Then the child will live long because it's well pleasing unto the Lord. So fathers who hear this, you have young children. I encourage you to start now while the young child is impressionable. Start now taking time with your child. Even if you have a young teenager, there's still hope for a young teenager. You may not be able to discipline a young teenager the way you discipline a, 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 a two or three year old. And then it goes back to uh, dealing with people according to knowledge. That's what the Bible tells the husband to do. To deal with his wife according to her knowledge. You have to deal with your child the same way according to their knowledge. So if they're at the age of puberty and you know when they get to that age, they begin to feel themselves. You have to take a different approach. But you still bring them to the mouth of the word. You know? And, and, and I, I, I admonish you to do it as early as possible. So that it's easier for the child to obey you. It's easier for the child to fulfill the scripture for their lives. And so we'll finish. I'm going to finish this up now because I'm ready to move out of Colossians. Servants, obey. In all things, your masters, according to the flesh, not with our service, as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whether ye do, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. And, and that's one of the biggest things, people. You got to understand that. Stop looking for man to give you, an, give you a reward. Your reward comes from heaven. We do things and when man don't give us the reward that we feel like we should justly have, we get upset. But remember, you're a child of God. Man, he don't have a reward that will suffice you. Nothing but a paycheck other than that. It's nothing he have that, that will suffice you because you're a child of God. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done. And there is no respect of person. In other words, you do wrong, you get wrong. God bless you all. I pray that Colossians 3 have been a blessing to you. I will read Colossians 4 and, and we may go into Colossians 4, but I feel the Lord leading me in other places of the world. God bless you all. This is the Bishop's Desk. I pray that it has been a blessing to you. And if you don't have young children, maybe you can share it with somebody these last few segments to a father, to a, 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 a mother, and, and pray that the word of God be a blessing to them. God bless you all.